Hi everyone, welcome to Talking Tomorrow. I'm Jabria Baylor, and on today's episode, I'll be talking with some innovators from the Rutgers Honors College, a filmmaker and curator from the Mason Grove School of the Arts and an Asbury Park Artistic Collective. From pharmaceuticals to filmmaking and everything in between, these are tomorrow's industry leaders. First up, a group of young innovators developing creative ways to engage women in STEM. Here with me now is Dream Teams from the Rutgers Innovation Lab at the Honors College. So ladies, can you tell me a bit about yourselves and the group? Hi, thank you so much for having us on. It's great to be here. Um, so yeah, Dream Teams actually started in the Honors College Forum Mission Course last fall. Um, Rebecca and I and one of our other co-founders just happened to be in the same class. We were all pharmacy majors, all women, had pretty similar interests and those all kind of aligned. And we created the first sort of iteration of our um, project, which was called FemSTEM at the time. And it was originally a web app, which worked in concert with tradable playing cards. Um, so those were our two platforms. And we wanted to create an innovation that would inspire young women to pursue the STEM fields, because that's something that we were all interested in. And since then, we've undergone some changes, but that was kind of the original idea and the, the birth of the whole thing. So where did this inspiration for the project come from? Um, so I know all three of us kind of had shared experiences in our journey to um, our own fields, respectively. Um, I know I got my fair share of like critical comments over some like career choices. And I think that um, when young girls, especially like face this kind of um, pushback, I guess they kind of seek others who have gone through the same experiences. Um, I know I personally had um, some troubles when starting into my initial jobs when I was growing up. Um, I worked a lot in the tech field and I worked a lot in like retail stores and things like that and I consistently felt a pushback from customers who didn't believe what I was saying or would go over my head to a male rather than to me and wouldn't believe that I knew what I was talking about just because I was a female. So can you tell me a bit about this project? Like what age group is this for? So the project itself is a mobile app now instead of a web app and it still works in concert with our tradable playing cards. They're designed kind of like baseball cards, but instead of baseball players, we feature women who were successful in the STEM fields. And it's kind of like Webkins in the sense that we have a physical product and it trans transforms into digital. a digital version when you plug the code into the app. So we're mainly heading towards um, um, like a middle school age group right now because we did some customer discovery and we saw that time after time, people, once they hit the middle school age, we saw girls going a different way from boys and there's no like certain rhyme and reason on why that's happening to everyone, but we do see that at that point, girls are just heading more towards, you know, language arts and, and the humanities, humanities yeah. rather than anything in the STEM field. So we want to try and help do something about that. So why do you think that is? Um, we think it has something to do with both the difficulty of the classes mm -hmm. because that kind of increases as you get older and the variety of difficulty levels increases as you get older. Um, so that in combination with just the <coughs> culture surrounding STEM, it's like very much a boys club. And even though there's no like individual just like commanding women to pursue the humanities instead of STEM, like there's no one person who's like, you can't do this. It, that's just the way the culture is. And there's all of these implicit biases that prevent women from, from pursuing the fields that they could potentially be really good at. So how do you think your product is going to fix this situation? So I think despite the 
increase in social activism in recent years um, to try and circumvent this issue, there's still a huge disparity. And we think that our innovation is different um, in the sense that we're creating an educational platform that's also really fun. And we're putting the emphasis on the fun. We want girls mm -hmm. to be able to interact with each other when they play this game. We want them to genuinely be interested in it. We want it to be something that they do outside of school willingly. Um, I compared this to Webkin's earlier because I do think that it has that same quality, that same fun quality. Um, so we think that because of that, this will be something that really facilitates both learning and just enjoyment, just interaction with friends, with the material. And we hope that in participating in this game, girls acquire the skills that they need and the confidence that they need to pursue the STEM fields. Okay. Well, I would like to thank these lovely ladies for joining us. And we'll be right back after this short break. The Gender and Media Minor a unique collaboration of the School of Communication and Information and the Department of Women's and Gender Studies at Rutgers University. This innovative program blends the insights and expertise of the School of Communication and Information with the Women's and Gender Studies Department, as a wide range of diverse ideas and skills are brought together in a program of study that can be personalized to address your specific interests and goals. Next up is Charles, a filmmaker who is currently working on his first feature-length film, Good Men, which will explore masculinity, sexual assault, and the fraternity culture. Charles is also the head curator of the annual No Flash video show held at the Zimmerly Art Museum in New Brunswick, New Jersey. In 2018, No Flash received over 700 submissions and continues to grow, bringing together and sharing the work of emerging artists and filmmakers. We want to get lost in LA. Dominique clips on my toe. Why is my. Like, the parent friend who will be having a great, intimate combo. Una viuda timida, amable y frágil. Odia ruido fuerte. Still in my chakra, and all of these songs I bring you to my presence when you feel alone. Sometimes the parents will even talk to each other. Are we hiring? Ah, Y'all hiring today? 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 Are you hiring today? No. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, mate. Uh, I certainly could use a job. Welcome back, everyone. I'm here with Charles, filmmaker and curator at the Mason Grove School of the Arts. So, No Flash, your video show, where did the idea come from? Like, do you work by yourself or do you work in a group? Yeah, totally. Um, so, No Flash is actually co-founded by uh, Jordan Rathis, who's a um, video artist and art educator, um, Ruby Ryan, who's uh, another filmmaking student at Mason Gross, and myself. Um, I'm currently the uh, the head uh, director and curator, um, and Ruby does it alongside me. Um, and it kind of just came out of, uh, Jordan was our professor our first semester at Mason Gross, and she gave us a really incredible opportunity to um, you know organize a one night show um, at her own um, kind of shared gallery studio space in Brooklyn. Um, and that went incredibly well. It was something that uh, Ruby and I didn't really know we would enjoy, but uh, it kind of just took off from there. Um, and come year two, uh, we kind of needed to find a new space and said, why wouldn't we just kind of bring it more to our own mm -hmm. community? And um, Thomas Sokolowski and Amanda Potter, um, director of the Zimmerly and curator of education at the Zimmerly respectively, um, you know, warmly embraced the idea from the start. Um, and they hosted us there last year. They'll be hosting us there this year. and. Um, that's kind of where it's at right now. It's just something that, um, yeah, super <laughs> passionate about. So how did you sit through 700 submissions? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that was something uh, I don't think anyone really anticipated. Um, we just, yeah, it was uh, like 750 submissions from over you know, 25 countries. Um, it took a while. <laughs> That's the simple answer to that question. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, uh, of course, um, you know, I got to learn a lot as a filmmaker and artist myself, um, you know, just being on the other side of that whole process. Um, you know, I'm also always submitting my work <laughs> to festivals and whatnot. Um, yeah, that's, uh, it's a boring answer, I guess, but <laughs> takes time. <laughs> um, and yeah, resilience, it, I, I guess it, um, you know, the hard part was, um, you know, getting down to the wire of, you know, which 
uh, it was somewhere to 20, 20 to 25 works that we ended up actually including in the show is when it actually got uh, a little difficult. <laughs> <laughs> so was there a set date for No Flash 2019 or? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, No Flash is uh, it's entirely focused on emerging time-based artists and filmmakers. Um, that's ranges from undergrad students like myself to um, working artists. Um, we're definitely in early April. We're kind of bouncing between um, the yeah first two weekends in April 2019. Um, but yeah, we're absolutely going to be in New Brunswick. And um, submissions are actually open right now. Uh, our website's uh, noflashvideo.org. Um, and yeah, and, and it's not only important, um, you know, for uh, emerging artists and filmmakers to have um, this event. You know, it's uh, we're obviously at Rutgers <laughs> University and in New Brunswick, um, and we've um, kind of been making a big effort to make ourselves visible and accessible to not only the students here, especially students, um, for example, in STEM who might not otherwise be getting into the Zimmerly, um or being exposed to arts and humanities, getting those people um, you know, interested, getting people uh, in the broader New Brunswick community interested um, because um, you know, it's free <laughs> and a good time. <laughs> <laughs> so switching over to you as a filmmaker, like, was this always a passion of yours? Yeah, I mean, um, this is always a, a wonky question for me because I always <laughs> give a super cheesy answer. But um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of just always been something that made sense for me I, like something that i never really uh second guessed I, I guess like that's what a passion is something that you don't really have to wonder why you're doing it i know that's <laughs> probably not a great answer but uh that's kind of how i feel about you know why i got into it so um, what about your major in philosophy does that tie into your work or how do you tie it yeah um I mean, I always say I'm a I'm kind of a bad philosophy <laughs> major because um, you know philosophy should be an activity, um, and you know I feel like I'm not always as active um, in those circles. Um, but no, it's it's truly a, an, an integral part of kind of yeah artistic process and kind of anything I do. Period. Just endlessly informs um, yeah the work I'm doing, uh, filmmaking and curating. Um, yeah, particularly in um, you know, aesthetics um, and whatnot, yeah. So where did this idea for your new feature length, Good Men, where did this idea come about? Yeah, um, yeah, so I mean, up till this, uh, I've only made short films. Um, you know, recently I had a short premiere at the uh, Newark International Film Festival, which is great, but um, I recently, um, it just kind of came together, I had written uh, the rough draft of the script called Good Men, um, and long story short, um, ended up doing a crowdfunding campaign for it, which went pretty well. Um, so yeah, I mean, essentially, it, it focuses on it focuses on um, the danger of passivity in um, you know rape culture, specifically um, kind of in our university context, um, which are highly concentrated instances of it, um, and you know what are the uh, repercussions um, of that notion of silence, um, and um, yeah, and I, I, I've never been in a fraternity myself. Um, you know, it was something I considered my first semester here. Um, ended up just not being for me, but it's something I've always been surrounded with, especially living on College Ave um, for three years now. Um, a good amount of my friends have been. Um, you know, pretty passionate about their fraternities and sororities. Um, and you know, it's, of course, it's not inherently a bad thing. There's a lot of great things about fraternities and sororities, which, you know, they're obvious. Um, but you know, I think, as most people are aware, it gets to a certain point where um, you start to question, um, yeah, some of the more negative aspects of these cultures. Um, so yeah, it's just always been something that's kind of been on my mind and in my social spaces. and. Um, just themes of uh, masculinity have always been in my work and just kind of came together. Um, yeah. So thanks for sharing that with us and we're going to introduce our last guest after this short break. The Gender and Media Minor, a unique collaboration of the School of Communication and Information and the Department of Women's and Gender Studies at Rutgers University. 
This innovative program blends the insights and expertise of the School of Communication and Information with the Women's and Gender Studies Department as a wide range of diverse ideas and skills are brought together in a program of study that can be personalized to address your specific interests and goals. Finally, I'm sitting down with Russell and Ram Roussel, co-founders of Foster Magazine. This collective focuses on a wide variety of artistic endeavors from music to visual arts. Welcome back. I'm here with Foster Magazine, the Asbury Park Collective. Can you guys introduce yourselves? Well, I'm Justin. Um, I mainly do um, photography. I do a little bit of film, do graphic design. Um, I run the Foster Magazine account on the Instagram. I do a uh, majority of the event planning. And uh, yeah, I'm f with um, all my other like um, workers as well and like um, my teammates as well, which is like they cannot be here right now, but it's like seven of us. And um, yeah. My name is Ram Rousseau. Um, I'm head of film for Foster Magazine. I also do a little bit of photography. And hello, my name is Russell. Um, I'm head of marketing as well as music, and I do uh, the journalism as well. So when and where did you guys all meet? So um, in short, we kind of met in high school, but we weren't really the closest of friends until we went to college. Um, there we kind of all started um, as pre-med students. After a semester there, we kind of decided um, uh, medicine wasn't the route for us. So having a background in art, uh, we decided to just collaborate together and um, make a platform where uh, people and kids our age could um, put their music, their photography, their films in a singular place um, in order to grow as artists themselves. So. So what do you think all brought you guys together? Do you think it was fate or? I think it was actually fate, to be honest. <laughs> well, I, we were all in the same situation. We were all pre-med, like you said. And then we all, we, like, we grew up in the same area, too. So it was, it was bound to happen, like, sooner or later. But we were all in the same situation. We didn't like what we were doing. And then we just, like, so, yeah, I guess. Like, maybe we just so happened to meet up. I'm his brother, so I'm always with him. But we just <laughs> yeah. randomly met. I Justin. think it was all, like, the same. Uh, hatred in what we were pursuing at the time, oh, yeah, which was that. specifically just books and studies and stuff like that. And we just figured out it wasn't for us, um, constantly forcing ourselves to stay up hours on end um, uh, studying material. Um, we figured we could have put our talents um, elsewhere. And didn't, that's how we made Foster Magazine. It didn't even yeah. make sense for us to like be doing something like that. Cause like all throughout high school, I don't know, I don't know about you, but me and him, like we weren't, we weren't always like academically inclined in high school. Like our grades were okay. Like, like we'd get some C's sometimes, but it just w didn't make sense to like decide right after high school we wanted to go in something like as grueling as like pre med or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Like um, my parents were kind of like very like down, like on down on me for like trying to like get um, pre med and do all the stuff that's like um, biology, get a good job, get a good like payroll and all that stuff. And I was so about it too until I eventually um, went to actually college and found out that this is not something I really had a passion for. And then like next thing you know, I ran into him at Brookdale um, and we just kind of talked for like two hours. And then next thing you know, we're all both deciding to change our majors and switch it. And then we all hung out for like the first time ever. And like all of us, like me, Ram and Russell. And from there on, it's just been history. Yeah, literally it was just on a whim. Seriously, so we all just sat down. We're just like, guys, we got to do this. Like, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> so literally, it was just that, and then the rest. Like now, we're here. Just so. rammed it. Okay. Yeah, yep. pretty cool. So, how is creativity important to you guys? Well, um, like to me, like growing up, I would always like be playing with like toys and stuff. But I was drilled as a kid to just always think in one direction. Um, I had the mindset of going into something like biology or like even law because those were the only two options I was given like by my parents. So I was like conditioned to think in like a linear fashion. That's all, I was like only trained to like think in that direction. So all throughout like my childhood, I thought I didn't have an imagination until I met like the right people. And then I guess like what it means to me is it's, it's all like it's, it's really important to me because that's all I am right now because 
I'm, I completely dropped everything else, and that's all I'm focusing on is creativity. And it sucks because um, I'm we're all firm believers that everyone has creativity. Everyone um, has that mindset that they can be creative. They can put out in something bigger than themselves. And it's just uh, with the way things are education-wise, um, you're kind of forced to just keep yourself in a box. And for some others, it takes longer to figure that out themselves. And um, I guess the goal with everything here is to just try to um, promote self-expression, I guess. So uh, um, that's a big thing that I believe in. Yeah, creativity is definitely about like holding down everything that you thought about in your, in your mind and bringing it to life exactly. Like for me, just as like how Ram put it with playing with toys, I do the same thing, play with toys, play with my fingers, play with pencils, whatever I can get my hands on honestly as a kid. Cause like I didn't have like that, that many people around me to like play with. So I just play with like anything I could find. And that kind of like correlated as I grew up more. I started like doing like a lot of like designing on people's shoes, like for bands and stuff. And next thing I know, I got like tired of that eventually then I picked up a camera and I actually borrowed their money to like, actually buy it. It was so, f yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I eventually, I, eventually no, I paid them back. And um, yeah, yeah, from there on, we started doing our first shoot and then like I started figuring out that I was good with the camera. And because um, Ram taught me a lot of stuff about it and like, because he, he knew about it like before I did, but like only by like a month or two. And we kind of just like ran with it ever since and it's been straight up history and I appreciate it so much because it's opened up so many doors for us and we are just running with it right now and brings us right here as we said before. Yeah and also like this isn't a thing where um, some people think it's too late to start especially once they're done with high school but we've literally been doing this since September 2017 so just about a year. Um, so with saying that, um, I guess it's kind of cliche to say, but it's never too late for anybody, really. Um, it's kind of just uh, finding out that drive that um, is in all of us, I guess. Um, yeah, that's all yeah. you really need. All you need is some drive, some passion, and some a drive, little bit of some friends that are super dope. And some finesse. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then you got it. <laughs> are there any individuals that influence your styles? Oh God! I could, oh, you guys, you guys already know, man. Hey, you go first. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I'm, I'm gonna Tyler. say mine because mine might be a little bit different, but I know which ones are, are theirs that sh we share. Um, Petra Collins, I love her. She's like, um, she does photography, filmmaking, and her stuff is like so weird, but it's so good. <laughs> like, and another one I know that they have a two is um, Brock Hampton, uh, Jane Smith, and Tyler the Creator, who's like their imagination and everything they work on, not just music, but like everything like where it comes to filmmaking, directing, creative, like um, consultant, everything, the whole shebang really. So thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate it. And I can't wait to see what you guys have in store. Yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jabria. Yeah. Thank you for watching. I'm Jabria Baylor and this is Talking Tomorrow. <laughs>